Hello, this is Dr. Michael Hassan, the engineering doctor, and this is lecture number 36, Tri-State Logic of Chapter 6, Flip-Flops of the Course Digital Logic Design for Digital Systems for Digital Electronics. This is a disclaimer for you to read. I cite three references in digital logic design. However, there are many books available. In chapter six contents, we covered introduction to sequential networks, memory elements, the SR flip-flop, clocked SR flip-flop, the JK flip-flop, the T-type flip-flop, the D-type flip-flop, flip-flops characteristic equations, and modular latches and flip-flops. Today, we'll talk about a very interesting subject, which is tri-state logic. Tri-state logic is related to digital communication. How do we communicate with multiple input and output devices on a single bus? Uh, this single bus called tri-state bus, which will allow us to transfer data on many, many devices on the same bus. So, to do that, we use something called tri-state logic. And tri-state logic is, uh, can be achieved by using um, what's called tri-state buffers and tri-state inverters. What is a tri-state buffer? A tri-state buffer, the output of flip-flop, can be enabled or placed on a high impedance state or open circuit. So the buffer uh, either it's uh, enabled or disabled. So by cascading the flip-flop with a tri-state or tri-state buffer will allow us to transfer data to the bus, okay? And if there is a control signal active at that time. Otherwise, if the control signal is not active, the data is not placed on the bus. So with large number of input and output devices, uh, only two devices will be enabled, the receiving device and the transmitting device. So the transmitting device will be enabled to use the bus, and the receiving device will be enabled to receive the data on the bus. By doing that, all the other input and output devices will be fully isolated. So a tri-state buffer exhibit three output state a low-level state, a high-level state, and a third state provides an open circuit or high impedance or high Z state. So a tri-state buffers allow direct wire connections of the outputs of many flip-flops or many digital components, many IOs, to a common line known as a tri-state bus, provided that only one output is enabled at a time. So one output is enabled at a time, and one receiving device is enabled at a time. And the tri-state logic allows the transfer of data back and forth between several digital components in a digital system successfully. Now, the receiving this device sometimes is a CPU, would be a data bus, okay, which is the data bidirectionally on the bus from the CPU to an output device or from input device to the CPU. So at that time, you may enable only one input device to input data to the CPU, so the CPU can read the data, or we can enable only one output device, so the CPU can output data to that output device, or the output device will receive the data from the CPU. Now, the tri-state buffer is very simple. The, sim the symbolic representation of the tri-state buffer and the truth table, the logic symbol shown. We have the input A and the output F, and we have control signal C. Now, the control signal could be active high, as shown in A, or it could be active low with the small circle here, as shown in figure B. So if the control signal is zero in figure A, it means the control signal is inactive. So A, F, whatever the value of A, F will be open circuit. It's high impedance, high Z. So if C is zero, zero, whether it's A is zero or one, 
whatever the data is, F will be high Z or high impedance. But once actually uh, A is uh, is 0 or 1 and C is active, 1, 1. So if C is active, which is in this case 1, 1, F will be equal to A. If it's A is 0, F will be equal to 0. If A is 1, F will be equal to 1 or f will be equal to a so this is really like a pass gate allow us to pass information from a from the transmitting device to the bus which is f and f will be connected to the bus now as we said the control input c could be active law so in this case if active law f will be equal to a if c is zero if and only f c is zero but if c is one F will be placed on high impedance or high Z or circuit. Sometimes we need to invert the data. So F will be the complement of the inversion of the data A. To do that, we'll use an inverter and we'll use the tri-state inverters. And tri-state inverters, they have a lot of applications. Uh, so in figure A shows the logic simple and the tool table of tri-state inverter with active high on C while figure B present a tri state inverter with active low control signal. So again here, if C, because it is active high in A, if C is zero, F will be high impedance, will be open circuit. But if C is one, F will be the complement of A. If A is zero, F will be one. If A is one, F will be zero. So it will be the complement of A. On the other hand, with this circuit, C is active low in B. So if C is active low, if it's C is 0, 0, F will be the complement of A because it is an inverter. So F will be 1 if A is 0, F will be 0 if A is 1. Yeah, but if C is inactive, 1, F will be placed on high impedance, which is high Z. So A will be 0, 1, high impedance, and high impedance. Tri-state bus. The figure shows a digital system with three D-type flip-flops connected to a tri-state bus. Only one tri-state buffer is enabled at a time. For example, C1 will be 1, uh, FF1, flip-flop 1 will be the output is driven into the bus, while the other two flip-flops, FF2 and FF3, are disabled since C2 and C3 are 0. So by placing C1 is 1, only one data will be placed on the bus, which is the data coming from flip-flop 1. The other two will be disabled. So it's a beautiful uh, organization of data being lodged to flip-flop and synchronized by a specific clock. All the data will be an open impedance or high impedance uh, for uh, for the buffers, which they are inactive because their control signals is, in this case, zero or inactive. The, the only data placed on the bus is, is the data coming from F1 because C1 is active, C1 is 1. So this is the concept in digital communication when we use many uh, input-output devices and CPU could be a single CPU or multiple CPUs. The data are controlled by a, by, by a tri-state buffers or the tri-state inverters and tri-state bus where the data are carried on to variety and output devices. So the process is very systematic. There is no ambiguity. There is no data collision at all. There is a very organized process that will ensure a very successful digital communication due to the fact of having tri-state logic. This is the end of this lecture. I thank you so much for listening. Please subscribe and uh, give me a thumb up. Uh, to subscribe, click on the circle kindly. And hopefully to see you soon in the next lecture. Sincerely, Dr. Hassan.